Hello, good evening, very welcome. Uh, welcome to another Ash of London album ranking. Tonight we're going to uh, mellow things out a bit after uh, the previous two, Huskadoo and uh, System of a Down. So, um, you don't need your earplugs in anymore. Um, so, yeah, um, today I'm going to be ranking the uh, rather small output of one of my favourite female singer-songwriters, that's uh, Gillian Welsh, who um, is... Uh, Pretty much a country folk Americana singer, if it's in that kind of country category. A lot of acoustic stuff, um, but great, great songwriter. And also um, dabbles in some uh, traditional folk and country music as well. Uh, she's been around for a while. It's quite a short um, a discography. She's got five studio albums to her name. She does um, collaborate with her partner, David Rawlings, uh, on all her releases, but uh, I'm just ranking the ones that are um, under her banner, under the Gillian Welsh um, title, uh, which of, their, of which there are five. So, um, yeah, she, her first release came out in 1996. And she's only, like I say, she's only released um, five albums, but um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, quality rather than quantity. So yeah, a bit about Gillian, she uh, born in New York City and was adopted, she was put up for adoption and uh, her um, uh, adop adoptive parents um, they moved to LA, I think they were involved in the music business or in, uh, in some kind of... Um, entertainment business and they moved to LA to work on a TV show there so she kind of grew up in um, LA area California and then she headed back to the east coast I think to uni at Boston and uh, I think that's where she met Dave Rawlings and um, carried on from there really I think she was actually studying music at uni uh, she, her, her earlier musical experiences are quite quite um, bizarre really she was actually she actually played bass in a goth band while she was at uni which is quite I no, would love to have seen that that would have been absolutely brilliant and then she played drums in a uh, kind of like a, a psychedelic surf band as well so she's a well-rounded musician and a great singer great songwriter and um, I do I do wish she'd get a little bit more recognition for what she what she's done over the years you know she's um uh, you know, she's pretty much under the radar, to be honest. I mean, she's well loved and well respected within the folk and country communities, and um, you know, worldwide. Um, but yeah, she just needs a little, little bit more exposure, I think. Anyway, okay, little uh, my little five album run down here. Um, there, there's not a great deal between these. They're all really good albums. I'd recommend anyone, a, a, any of them, to anyone that's never heard any of Gillian Welsh stuff. So, um, let's start off, shall we? Uh, number five. This is this was her second release from uh, 1998. It was two years after her debut, and it's called uh, "Hell Among the Yearlings." Um, I think that might be the only one of the only <laughs> the only photographs of her on an album. That's actually looking at the camera. But yeah, great. This is a great album. Um, it's, um, she does a lot of a lot of the songs are kind of um, kind of contemporary. A lot of contemporary settings done in that kind of like Americana, old style um, delivery with the acoustics, acoustic guitars, and banjo. It's mainly acoustic guitar and banjo that they use. They do use bands occasionally, drums, piano occasionally, but a lot of the time it's just um, just the two of them there with the the acoustic stuff going on. This starts off with Caleb May, which is a great track. I'm good till now. The Devil Had a Hold of Me. There's a lot of uh, religious references in, in her music, as is common with a lot of country country and folk tunes. Uh, One Morning, Miner's Refrain. Uh, so, yeah, some great Rock of Ages, Whiskey Girl. Some yeah, great songs. It's produced by T-Bone Burnett, who uh, used to play with Bob Dylan, didn't he? He was Bob Dylan. Uh, one of his museums in the 70s when he joined the Bob Dylan backing band. So um, yeah, good, good, good album. Um, you know, so it's only at the bottom of this heap of uh, my um, Gillian Welsh album because it's um, there. <laughs> the the four above it are slightly better. So anyway, Helen and the Earlings, number five in my Gillian Welsh ranking. Okay, number four. Uh, this was a great album. 2001 this came out. I think this was the next one along, actually, after Helen on the Earrings. So it did, didn't rush, you know, it was like three years later. And it's uh, Time the Revelator. See, on that one, she's not quite looking at the camera there. But she's got a lovely, lovely, nice little red floral dress on there, which is really, pretty cool. And, yeah, this is really cool. This one's got some great stuff on here. Um, Revelator is a great track. It opens it. 
this was pure, pure acoustic an album. This where they really experimented with the just just the two of them. I think it was pretty much just banjo and um, acoustic guitar on this. I don't even think there was any um, any harmonica or anything. Um, My first lover, dear someone, red clay halo. Um, there's a great track on here called Elvis Presley Blues, which is one of her, one of her best songs. It's really really good. Uh, I dream a highway closes it, which is a a 14 minute epic or four, actually almost 15 minute epic, which is really good. That's well worth listening to and um, particularly with the minimalized kind of um music you know, in instrumentation you, but it really keeps you engrossed in the whole all the way through it may sound you know like a 15 minute acoustic epic doesn't sound that enticing on paper but when you listen to it it's just really really good uh, i want to sing that rock and roll is a good track i think that was um was t-bone burnett involved in this again i can't remember but um yeah so there's some great great songs it's really weird thing is they got um one of the songs is called April the 14th, Part 1, but there's no Part 2. And then there's a song called Ruination Day, Part 2. But there's no Part 1, but I was wondering whether they're, maybe they're two connected songs. But who knows? <laughs> I haven't noticed, to be honest. Um, but there, and there's a, a cool shot on the inside, actually. I love that um, I love that shot there. This is the guitar and her legs over this. She's got sensible shoes on. Uh, it's quite an unusual, austere kind of shot. Could be taken anywhere in the world, that. Any, any time in the last... Uh, 40 or 50 years, I guess. But um, great, yeah, great album. I think actually that that's her dress has been uh, used for the CD. Same same pattern as the dress on the front there. Ah, there you go. Okay, so um, yeah, and then all the songs are written by uh, Gillian and David. There they are on the back. There's David featuring on the back cover. And yes, great, great, great album. Um, 2001, number four in my uh, quick Gillian Welsh rundown. Time the Revelator. Okay. Next one, number three, halfway through. This was 2003. Now, this came out the year I saw her in the uh, Lost Highway documentary. The doc documentary, the, the, the BBC one, was um, just basically the history of country and western. And uh, the very final episode uh, was all about the future. Country stars are up and coming for the future. And uh, Gillian Welsh was, um, was one of them. And I just met watching it thinking wow this is some pretty good stuff um this was the album that was out at the time and this was the first album i got into with uh of gillian's it's called soul journey it came out the same year as the um the uh documentary was broadcast and it was uh, i thought it was superb this had a lot of um a lot of coverage around the way i think it's um in the uk uh, a lot of the magazines like q magazine featured it in their albums of the year and uh, it's got quite an unusual sleeve for gillian welsh it's a very very different kind of sleeve I wonder who did the drawings on those little bizarre little drawings everywhere. So, um, not to find out. I wonder who did them. Who did the illustrations? Ooh, let's see. Oh, someone called Steve Pelequin. There's more more on the inside there. Anyway, yeah, uh, this like I say, this was the first first um, Gilling Rash arm I um, I bought and got into. And I uh, just loved it straight away. Look at Miss Ohio, opening track. What a great, great song. Um, they've got Wayside, Back in Time, um, One Monkey, No One Knows My Name, Lowlands, one little song. Wrecking Ball, final track's a really good track. They have a full band on this. There's quite a lot of musicians um, featured on this. Um, um, not every, I mean, so there are some um, acoustic numbers as well. There's a couple of traditional songs on here. Um, Make Me a Pallet on Your Floor and what's the other one? I, I, I Had a Real Good Mother and Father. Which uh, I think they're both acoustic. I know that Palette is acoustic, but um, great, yeah, great album. Um, I saw the tour actually. Um, I, 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 2003 was my year for Gillian Walsh. I saw a doc saw the documentary. I got hooked into the music, bought the CD, and then went and, went and saw the gig. So um, yeah, she played played a really cool gig. It was just the two of them. There was no band on the gig. Just the two of them on stage. Uh, just switching between um, various acoustic guitars and banjos and things, and um, it was a it was a great great show. Um, so there you go. That's um, two thousand three. It's my number three in the Gillian Welsh album rundown, Soul Journey. Okay, top two. This next one was actually when I was compiling this list was my immediate. Choice for number one, but uh, then I, I'll just listen through all the others again. Then ooh, it just changed, and something just uh, snuck past it. 
Anyway, number two in this uh, Gillian Welsh rundown is her debut album, 1996, Revival. Once again, failing to see where the camera is, but I think yes, it's really nice styley, nice styley photographs actually. They kind of fit that kind of Americana theme, I think, the uh, Gillian Welsh shots on her, on her sleeves. But there's an interesting shot of a shoe on top of something there at the back. But yeah, I just this is a great album, I just love it. It starts off with Orphan Girl and then Annabelle, which is actually a classic. Um, pass you by but Annabelle is all about the hardship I, I have a feeling it may be inspired by the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression uh, um, Tear My Still House Down is a great track as well the uh, Akeny Bell um, what else we got on here One More Dollar, Barroom Girls Just um, again the, the kind of songs that could fit any era in um in the world really is something like this there's always, going, there's always been poverty around there's always been dodgy situations all kinds of things you know and a lot of these songs just kind of fit fit, fit a lot of those kind of scenarios really like we all like the Great Depression so there's some oh yeah it's quite arty sort of shots on these things really it's really nice really subdued there's that mellow There's a, even the sleeves are mellow because there's, there's not a lot of great up-tempo stuff for Gilling West it's all quite mellow stuff and um it's just, it's just great, really. I mean, um, all I can say is go out and uh, listen to the stuff. It's really they're all available for streaming. They're available on CD. Some of them are on vinyl as well. I mean, all my my whole collection is of uh, on is on CD, but um, it's all well worth getting. There was some. Um, I think T Bone Burnett appeared back on this. He was back. Oh, it's produced by T Bone. Yes, another T Bone Burnett production. I think he actually appears there. And um, there's a lot of influence from the because her influences are very hard to define really because um, she fits in that kind of bluegrassy country kind of style sometimes. But then you can oh, and then this one's a bit of Carter family in there. You can you can hear that with some of the influences. And um, an interesting thing about this is that old um, James Burton plays on this. He plays guitar on this. And James Burton was from the Elvis Presley band um, in the later years, or late sixties and in the seventies. And um, actually, no, I think it was uh, even earlier than that. To be honest, because I remember James Burton was one of the inspirations um, for for Jimmy Page for Led Zeppelin. It um, must have been pretty cool having him uh, playing guitar on one of your albums. A bit of a legend. But um, anyway, there you go. So um, there's kind of an austere sound about this, but it's still really, really good. And um, that's number two in my Gillian Welsh rundown revival from 1996, which uh, brings me to um, the number one Gillian Welsh album. Which uh, wasn't really there until I uh, gave it another listening to and listened to it again today just to make sure. And it's her most recent album, released in 2011. So come on, Gillian, what, what are you doing? You need some more uh, more music. And the, the previous one to this was um, Soul Journey, which was uh, eight years. So she doesn't rush, doesn't rush things, does she? I know she's doing things with uh, David Rawlings as well, uh, with his band, and they've done stuff as George, she, lots of other things. She actually appeared in the um, the film. Uh, oh brother, where art thou? Little cameo appearance in there. There's a, a customer trying to buy one of the uh, one of the singles they released. Anyway, but, uh, talking too much. Number one is 2011's Harrow and the Harvest, which is a superb album. And uh, after Soul Journey, which was a full band album, they've gone back to the acoustic on this, and this is just pure acoustic album, and it's just just absolutely brilliant. Um, it's got some uh, some great. The, the, she was saying in an interview they're kind of like. They'd lost their kind of mojo, I think. Their um, how, how does she put it? I can't remember what it was. Um, she'd uh, da, 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 I can't remember now. I can't remember how she worded it. They'd lost they'd lost their kind of songwriting. It wasn't like a writer's block as such, but they kind of lost their kind of mojo for writing good songs. I think. I think they're a bit fuzzy. They don't want to ch- churn out anything. But it's uh, gone back to um, a more simpler sound. And a lot of it was quite spontaneous as well. Apparently, a lot of it was quite spontaneous. Some, some of it written in the studio. Recorded in one or two takes, most of it, and um, it's yeah, just a really, 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 really cool, cool album. Some great songs, Scarlet Town, Dark Turn of Mine, The Way It Will Be, which is a kind of little up-tempo song, but still pretty um, pretty kind of austere as well. There's a, a great song called Tennessee, which I think is one of her best songs, which is a superb, superb song, some superb lyrics in there. Down Along the Dixie Line, great song. Six Wide Horses. Six by Horse reminds me of an old, it almost sounds like a, an old English folk song in some way. I don't know, kind of like it. 
style of it and the, the words to it. And uh, just just uh, the the way the whole thing end, ends as well, just brilliant, brilliant track. And that's uh, that's the final track. But uh, just a great great album actually. I said the more I think about it now, yes, it is definitely her best album. One of the um, one of the best albums of its year as well. There's a picture of the uh, Gillian and David on the back there, relaxing in a big field. And now a bit about the sleeve. The sleeve. I'll take the the um, well, it's not much really chunky. Just one single piece of uh, chunky board. <laughs> But it's um, uh, John John Dyer Baisley, Baisley, Basley, Baisley, and the artist, uh, which is super, superb sleeve though. It's um, kind of embossed as well. It's um, lovely, lovely drawing. And now uh, John um, John Baisley, he's a um, uh, heavy metal guitarist who plays in the band called Baroness, and he's, um, he's done a lot of album sleeves for his own band, Baroness, and other bands like Vel Attack and uh, who else he's done stuff. For? I can't remember. Uh, I think some. I think he's actually done some work for Metallica as well. But he's he's mostly um, associated with heavy metal album sleeves. So for them him to do this was quite a surprise. He's got his, his owl. There's always an owl somewhere on his paintings or drawings. The old owl up there. Now, and this album, although I've got it on CD, um, I have seen this on uh, vinyl as well, but it's very expensive. And um, the the album art, the front cover, was in colour. So. Um, don't know um, where, where that, that that was mainly a work in progress. It was just on the um, outline before um, it, it was coloured in or whatever, um, or whether it was just adapted from the colour. I don't really know, but um, it's a superb piece of um, illustration. And yeah, for a superb album. So there you have it. That's my um, Gillian Welsh rundown. That's um, Harrow and the Harvest number one. So yeah, um, and that's it. Um, no. Like I've said at the end of every video, there's more to come, so uh, keep posted. Uh, be quite a nice um, change from um, the heavier stuff. Uh, anyone who's into System of a Down and Husker Do, I'd like to um, see them get into a bit of Gillian and Welsh, Gillian Welsh as well, so it'd be quite nice to mix it up a bit and get some different things out there. Um, which has given me an idea of my next uh, video, so watch out. And that, that'll be coming along in a, in a couple of days with a slight Christmas uh, connection there somewhere. Anyway, that's me for now, so uh, I'll say thank you for being there, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, bye for now.